See you too, team keep it clean What's going on, it's Engraven here with another video And in this video, I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game We all watched between the Ravens and the Bucks And boy, going into this game, I was not confident in the Ravens at all um, That was both before it was announced and even after it was announced that The Bucks had a lot of injuries and a lot of people out I just... Cause man, this this 2022 Ravens team, they've shown you, man. Like they, they just ain't been it. They ain't been it. They ain't been able to finish games consistently. They they have so many inconsistencies. Um, and I know some people go, "Oh, you gotta believe, man. You gotta keep the fit." No, you gotta believe what your eyes tell you as well. And going into this game, I was thinking, "Oh boy." I mean, I hope they win, obviously, but I just wasn't sure about it. And in the beginning of the game, it was looking like same old Ravens, man. Um, I, I got so frustrated because I was watching the offense. And um, and shout out, real quick, shout out to the Bucks fans. Because Bucks fans are a lot of fun. They a whole lot of fun. It's like we're going back and forth, talking all trash to each other. But it was all in fun, of course, at the stadium. And it's just like they, they were so much fun. And they knew it was all in fun. Wasn't Well, there was one guy who he was just, I don't know what he was on. He was just taking stuff too seriously. He, he's trying to be all rough and tough. It's like, what, what is he doing? But anyway, um, most Bucks fans, like 99% of them, all in fun, good time. Energy was great. It was super fun. So shout out to them. And the stadium is is beautiful. It's, it's, it's a party there. It's really, really nice. Um, but last night, early on in the game, uh, the way that the game started, I got so frustrated because I'm like, man, the Ravens, are they, 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 they limit themselves. It's so frustrating to watch their offense because they... They, they, they were very uh, predictable and limited. The reason I say that is because they got like 50 tight ends on the field at one time and one wide receiver. So it's like, all right, if you get you coming out like that, you make it easier for defenses, in my opinion, um, because on your passing plays, you're only going to get short stuff. I know Mark Andrews is a factor and whatnot. He could open it up a bit, and we saw Isaiah likely do the same thing last night. But if you come out with a bunch of tight ends and one wide receiver, it, it, it's, it's predictable what you're doing uh, because either you're running the ball uh, or that one wide receiver, oh, hey, we got to just cover him and we'll be straight. We don't give up anything deep to him, we'll be straight. And, of course, watch Mark Andrews, but I just got so frustrated with that. And Ravens... In the beginning of the game, it was just like, man, wh what are they doing? What are they doing? And they were barely running the ball. And it was like, okay, I um, they were passing the ball, but they were passing out of all these th 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 these sets with all these tight ends, man. And there were hardly any multiple wide receiver sets. And I'm like, man, what are you doing, man? Now, I know that um, the Bucks. They had a bunch of corners out. A bunch of their secondary was out. So I expected the Ravens to try to take advantage of that. But I expected them to do it with wide receivers, not a bunch of tight ends. That, that was my frustration. Um, but that's what they were doing. And they just, they were, it, it, it was just silly early on. Uh, was it silly intentionally or was it silly on purpose? Hey, they, they, I mean, they said that the plan was to try to air him out in the beginning, see what they would give him. Um, and Lamar did a lot of that. He this this was a game where, well, he, he <laughs> I was gonna say he threw the ball away on there was there was some plays that he made, and I said, hey, I said this is what I was talking about. This is exactly what I was talking about, um, especially after that Giants game, because I know everybody was super mad and super frustrated over that interception that he threw at the, under, the end of the game, because it was a frustrating interception. But I try to I try to tell people like, hey. Lamar has made so many of these plays before. So that's why he did it in the, in the Giants game. And not that it was an excuse, but that just is what it is. He's done it so many times before. There was a play last night's game. Early on, there's a couple of them. Where the offensive line didn't block on passing down. Hey, what's new, right? But the offensive line, they didn't block. Lamar had pressure. He had to run around, turn his back, run around, run around, run around. 
and James Prochet. James Prochet was open. Lamar threw it to him. But I don't know if he missed him or James Prochet fell. I got to see the replay of the game. But they were, they were close, but it, it didn't end up happening. Then there was another one, another play, passing play. Pressure came in. <laughs> he was new. Lamar scrambled around a bit, threw it off of his back foot, and it was completed. So this is what I'm talking about. He, he does this stuff a lot. Um, now, you don't want him to get into habit. You don't want him to make a bunch of throws off his back foot, but there are going to be times where he does it, and it works, and there are going to be times where he does it, and it doesn't work. Um, but, yeah, this, this game, I think, in the, I, I think in the first half he threw, what, 30 passes? I was like, hold up. I said, man, oh. I said, I said Lamar getting ready to throw, like, 60 passes in this game. But um, in the first half he threw 30 passes, and it was it, – it wasn't – Bad, but it wasn't good. It was like, uh, it was like, and and then on the, on the fourth down, um, and I know Lamar. Lamar was like, no, we want to go for it on that fourth and goal. I was screaming, screaming, take the points, take the points, take the points. It that at that point, if Ravens would have taken the points, they would have been down by four, because that point the Bucks it was ten to three. If they would have been down by four points. And I know the Bucks got the ball in the second half or whatever, and that was a little before halftime. But I was thinking, no, take the points. Because I was thinking, too, like, man, if Ravens lose this game and they end up losing it, especially if they lose it by, like, three points, oh, I, I'm going to be so heated because they didn't take the points. But my guy JT, he made a good point to me after the game. He's like, hey, if, if the Ravens would have taken them points, the game would have been over a lot earlier. They wouldn't have had to had go going through all the stress with the two minute warning and the onside. Well, they still would have went through the onside kick, but game would have been more out of reach early on. But anyway, they they did win, so cool. But take your points. And I know Lamar's like, hey, get get that special teams off the field. Uh, but I was thinking, no, nah, take take it. Um, then Lamar he he threw that ball to Demarcus Robinson. Like Robinson jumped up for it, dropped it, and I was like, uh, okay. If it would have worked out, hey, great. I mean, I still would have preferred him to take the points, but I obviously wish they would have got it, but it is what it is. I'm glad that this time it didn't come back to bite them in the butt. Um, but Lamar in, this, in the first half, ah, he was all right. It, 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 it looked a lot better. I saw the Ravens, like, they were, when they got the short passing game going, so you, you allow your quarterback to get into a rhythm, it looks so much better. Spread offense, got them the wide receivers running shorter routes and whatnot. Not everything is this long, deep, developing play. You 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 do the shorter stuff. It's like, oh, okay, hey, look, that's that actually works. It's nice. I like it. You spread it out um, with wide receivers, not just a bunch of tight ends, but wide receivers. Um, but in the second half, um, they flip flopped. So I guess Greg Roman was like, you know what? Let me get all this bad stuff out early on. Let me get all the bad strategizing out early on, and we're going to completely flip the script in the second half. I did not think that they were going to adjust. I didn't. I did not have confidence in the Ravens adjusting. Um, but they, they flipped the script. They went from pass heavy in the first half to run heavy in the second half, and it worked. Lamar went 8 for 8, um, two touchdowns, one uh, and uh, sort of check down to Ken Drake. Uh, and Lamar was doing a lot of that yesterday. He was taking the check downs. He threw the ball away. And even though when he threw it away, it was intentional grounding. Um, but he he was not forcing. Well, no, he did force it. There was one play that he forced um, to Mark Andrews. And that's another thing with uh, Mark Andrews. With Mark Andrews, um, when he went out, that was like a gift and a curse all at the same time. Because in the beginning of the game, Lamar was like, hey, he had that Kodak Black tunnel vision of Mark Andrews. He was looking for him the whole time, and he just he kept throwing it to him. And, I mean, Mark Andrews is obviously his best target, so you're going to throw to your best target. But when Mark Andrews went out, it really forced Lamar to be like, all right, what's up? Let me look at these other guys too. And I think, I wonder if... um. They actually changed the way that they call plays to since Mark Andrews was out. 
I wonder if that's what made them call a lot of the shorter stuff to the wide receivers and whatnot. I don't know. But I love with, with the shorter passes, it gets your offense going. It keeps things moving. And it gets different people involved. The way that they spread the ball around yesterday, uh, it was nice. And let me just look at the, the, the exact numbers. Um, Isaiah likely has six catches for 77 yards. Demarcus Robinson, six catches. Mark Andrews, three catches. Duvernay, four catches. Proche, three catches. I said, whoa, Proche. Drake, four catches. Josh Oliver, one catch. So that ball is getting spread around, man. And that's what we want. Um, we want the ball to be spread around. Uh, we talked about how, because uh, I know, of course, we've been talking about receiver for the longest. Um, but we also talked about the biggest change that the Ravens can make is from within with their philosophy. Uh, especially putting more emphasis on the passing game and just getting that ball to different people. So this was a, uh, a good step in the right direction for that. Um, do I have confidence that they'll continue? Not really, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I still think the Ravens need a philosophy overhaul, but we can talk about that another time. Um, so Lamar, yeah, in the second half, went eight for eight. Uh, two touchdowns, no picks. And ended the game off nice. Uh, they closed it out. He closed it out. They closed it out. And it was nice to see because it's like they, they were up. I loved it when they were up and they scored again. And then the Bucks, uh, the Bucks, they tried to come back, but Ravens finished the job. So that was nice to see. Uh, the running game, well, We'll talk about the pass game again a little bit later. But the running game, Gus Edwards, he looked good. And again, the second half, they were running like crazy. And now, well, hopefully Gus Edwards, I think it was just a hamstring, but I don't know. I didn't get to see what the official injury was. But um, Gus, he was running hard. He was just, he's the best running back on his team, man. He really is. And I think, um, I think the Ravens knew that. And I think that's why the Ravens, they did what they did business-wise. Uh, trying to hold Gus down for all them years to keep his yards and carries low uh, so they wouldn't have to pay him big running back money. Gus is the best running back on his team, even with a healthy J.K., and that's not a shot at J.K. at all. It's really not. Um, J.K. is nice too, but Gus is the best running back on his team. Uh, just the, his style of running, uh, the way that he gets his balance. And I know J.K. is really good at catching his balance, too. But Gus, with the, the, the mix of power and balance, and a nice little burst of speed, too. Gus ain't no burn or nothing. But he got a nice little burst. And I remember when he lost all that weight, and that gave him his burst. And I remember when he, when, when he first lost all that weight, I, my biggest concern was, oh, man, is he uh, going to still have the power? Power ain't going nowhere. It never left. Um, so shout out to Gus Edwards. He had 11 for 65, average 5.9 yards a carry. Ken Drake, 7 for 62, average 8.9 yards a carry. Lamar, 9 for 43, 4.8 yards a carry. Um, Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay. Good things happen when the Ravens involve Duvernay a lot. Devin Duvernay, two rushes for 33 yards, 16 and a half yards per carry. Uh, one of them, of course, went for that touchdown. Jet sweep king, baby. Hey. Jet sweep king, but it's nice when you don't strictly have him doing jet sweeps. So you could have him put his jet sweep king uh, crown on real quick, but don't make them be the don't make that be the only crown that he wears. And that's what the Ravens did uh, last night. So shout out to them for doing that. And then Justice Hill, who I remember people asked me last week, they were like, "Oh, do you think he's going to be in a doghouse?" I said, "No, no," and he wasn't. Uh, he had four rushes for 28 yards, average seven yards a carry. And Gut, uh, Ju excuse me, Justice Hill, he's strong, man. I keep saying it, man. That dude is strong. He looks small, he looks slender, but he is strong, man. He got some crazy strength. Uh, to the passing game, Mark Andrews out, Isaiah Likely up. It was nice, man. It was, I, was, I was so happy for Isaiah Likely, man, to see him get constantly involved. And this is what we've been waiting on. We didn't want it to happen like this being like forced because Mark Andrews was out but we were happy to see him step up in Mark Andrews absence it looked like early on him and Lamar they weren't on the same page on the first throw the, his first target I think where um he was running he found a little hole in the zone but he kept running Lamar through it a little behind him and I said oof but they made up for it in a big way uh six catches 77 yards and a touchdown his first touchdown of his career right 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So shout out to Isaiah Likely, man. Happy for him. Demarcus Robinson. He had a sneaky good game. Uh, six catches, 64 yards. Um, he was working them outside corners, man. He was getting his yak. He was putting little moves on him and whatnot. That's okay. All right, man. Uh, and and y'all will see some of that stuff in the vlog, man. Um, but anyway, uh, Mark Andrews, 3 for 33. Of course, he, he ended up going out with injury. Um, shoulder injury. He, um, oof. There was one pass with Lamar threw to him. I thought it almost got picked off. Uh, Cause there was two defenders on him And Lamar tried to squeeze that thing in there um, But it, they knocked it down And then the pass in the end zone That went to him um, The defender He knocked it down It was a really good defensive play um, And yeah but Mark Andrews The catches that he did make Were early on They were right away I mean Lamar was throwing to him Early and often uh, Devin DuVernay Of course uh, one, of the, one, one of the passes he caught Was a screen It was, oh, it was nice too Two of the passes like, like off of RPO plays Because one of them They motioned the running back Lamar snapped the ball Faked to the running back And then uh, Faked to the running back And threw the screen to Duvernay Then there was another one Where they motioned the running back Lamar faked to the running back And threw the Duv Like in between Like three bucks defenders It was a beautiful thing um, And then of course Drake Four catches for five yards um, Again the check downs Lamar was taking them check downs To Drake he was taking them. So, that was nice to see. Uh, special teams. Well, offensive line. Run blocking, second half. Good job. Uh, pass blocking. This game was shaky. It was shaky. It was up and down. So, I mean the usual. What can you expect? Uh, special teams this game. Devin DuVernay. Uh... Oh yeah, he had three he had three returns for seventy two yards. Um, so nothing crazy there. Uh, there was one where I thought he he had a little hole that he was gonna break, but Bucks closed it up. So nothing crazy there. Nothing crazy on the punt returns either. Uh, but Justin Tucker, of course, he made the field goal. But then on that fifty nine or sixty yard field goal, I was thinking, oh yeah, they going for it, which is good. They going for the field goal, but. Then I guess I don't know if the line didn't hold up And somebody got through Or I don't know if the trajectory was low And somebody got up I, I gotta watch the replay of the game But they blocked it So that sucked But Justin Tucker made all the point after touchdown So that was a good thing Now defense Defense um, With the defense They uh, missed opportunities man so many missed opportunities because they dropped so many picks last night. Marlon Humphrey dropped one early on in the game. Marcus Peters dropped one. Chuck Clark dropped one. There were at least like one or two more. They, they dropped at least four or five picks last night. And against the Tom Brady, man, you can't do it. And what's, what's funny uh, is that with like with Marlon Humphreys, for example, the rule applied there. After every drop pick... Touchdown um, And Marlon Humphrey he, he dropped the pick And Bucks end up scoring a touchdown on that drive um, Brady was He was off last night We saw some passes go in the dirt uh, We saw him throw some passes short Throw some passes off um, Ravens I, I was surprised Because they, they could not get consistent pressure on Brady When they did Like with Brady if you get consistent pressure on him, he'll make it easy for you. He'll just fall to the ground. He'll protect himself. He's like, no. I remember when uh, Bernard Pollard injured my ACL, sacking me in the pocket. He said, nope, not again. After that, he's, nope, I'm just falling down. Somebody near me and they, they about to sack me, I'm going down. Even though there were a few times where Brady, he, he did some scrambling. And when Brady scrambled, it looked so nasty, man. But he did it, man. He did it. And uh, it was like, Ugh, okay. But... Brady, uh, when they got to him, it was nice. Justin Houston, what, he got two sacks in a row last night. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, the pass rusher. Uh, hey, just change that man's position, man. Change his position. He, he ain't a safety. He's a pass rusher, man. Um, but Kyle Hamilton, shout out to Kyle Hamilton, too. Because toward the end of the game, Brady tried him one-on-one. -on -one. Brady tried him. And Kyle Hamilton knocked the ball away. He, he played great defense on that play. I was like, okay. Uh, Mar Marlon Humphrey This was probably Marlon Humphrey's worst game uh, probably, Yeah, probably his worst game Of the year um, Mike Evans just, He got him And that's Mike Evans 
Like, but this was Marlon Humphrey's worst game of the year, in my opinion. Um, it wasn't terrible the whole game. Just had some moments, some lapses and whatnot. Uh, and just some straight up where he just got dulled. He just got beat. Um, I remember uh, early in the game, I think on Buck's first offensive drive, uh, Mike Evans, it was in the red zone. Mike Evans did a nasty route on Marcus Peters, left Marcus Peters, beat him, beat him from jump, and Marcus Peters held him. <laughs> Marcus Peters held him. Marcus Peters was like, man, come on, hey, what, why, what, why, why you had to do me like that, man? Um, but it was a tough game for Ravens cornerbacks at secondary. There were a lot of times where Brady, Brady missed wide open uh, touchdown passes in the red zone, wide, wide open. Tight end open, Brady missed him. Wide receiver open, Brady missed him. He was missing. Um, so, yeah, man. Uh, the run defense, I don't know what the numbers were. Because early on, they didn't look good. But really in the short yardage, they didn't look good. They gave up a couple of little chunk plays here and there. Not too many, but it was the short yardage that was killing them. I mean, in this Leonard Fournette, that's a powerful running back. Uh, let me see what his numbers were. Because I, I don't know what his numbers were. Oh, 9 for 24. Okay. So, nothing crazy, but the, the short stuff with him. Oh, they, they, did a, they, they did a great job of running that defense, actually, overall. Um, okay, so Leonard Fournette, he, his longest rush was 9 yards. Uh, White, his longest rush was 8 yards. Um, so, nice. That's beautiful. But, yeah, you look at these receivers. Mike Evans, 6 for 123. <laughs> and, again, it's Mike Evans, man. That dude is a beast, man. Chris Godwin, 6 for 75. Uh, and it's just the open stuff, man. The wide open, the yak. That's what another big thing was. Yak not making that initial tackle and even making that initial contact and the Bucks wide receivers just breaking. So, uh, my boy Brashad Perryman, he had a catch. I said, oh, okay, there go Brashad, man. Good for him. Uh, Julio. I forgot Julio was there. He had two catches. Um, I remember one of them. I don't remember the second one. So, it, well, you know what's crazy? When um, when they were introducing the Bucks, they were introducing the receivers. They were, oh, Mike Evans. Then they would show a highlight of Mike Evans. Then they were, oh, Chris Godwin. Then they show a highlight of Chris Godwin. They were like, oh, Julio Jones. Then they just put Julio Jones' name and number on the screen. I'm like, man, y'all ain't showing no highlights of Julio Jones? But anyway, man. But, yeah, this was nice to see the Ravens close, man. Ravens had got a double-digit lead in the second half. Every game. Every game they do it. They got that double-digit lead, but they closed it out. So that was a beautiful thing. Um, so shout-out to the Ravens for finishing the job uh, finally. Um, shout-out to them for that. that. That was a beautiful thing uh, to see. Um, and, yeah, they, they still obviously got a lot of work to do. Um, they got some guys to get back healthy. But now I think there was there's a, there's a stat that the Ravens only play one game in the next 23 days. So I was like, oh, yeah, because they got, like, this kind of bye week now. Um, so today is the 28th. They don't play another game till November 7th. And then that's on Monday night. And then they go through that week. Then they got a bye week. Yeah. Wow. Ravens got a nice little break, man. So take advantage. Get healthy and get right. Not just healthy, but get right in the mind. Um, take a break from football. I mean, they get a little mini break from football now, but take a break from football. Take, take a break from all of it, man. Because they, they got to get right. Coaches, schemes, players, health, everything. They, they, they did a good job finishing last night, so now they can build on that. You're going up against a New Orleans team that banged up too. I mean, it's still early. It's good. We got a while before the game, so we'll see. But you're going up against an underachieving New Orleans team. I mean, obviously, you, you never know, but you got a big opportunity to be at, what, 6-3? and three? Going into the bye after how this team has been looking to be six and three, that would be amazing. Straight up. That would be amazing. Ravens still got a lot of work to do, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what it what trades they make. Um we'll see what happens, man. But I love y'all, appreciate y'all, and we out.